this video, we will describe the milk production of dairy animals. First, let's describe the lactation cycle of a dairy cattle. Lactation cycle is the period between one calving and the next. It is a must for the cows to calve in order for them to produce milk. After calving, the cow starts to produce milk. After reaching peak of production at about 4 to 6 weeks after calving, milk production gradually declines, then dries up at around 305 days post-calving. Should a cow be desired to calve every year, the cow then is bred about 6 to 82 days after calving, depending on the body condition of the cow at the onset of postpartum estrus or heat occurrence after calving. After a successful breeding, the cow proceeds to gestation period of about 283 days, and the cow calves again, giving a 350 to 365 day interval between two calvings. Within the cycle is the period of concurrent gestation and lactation. It is during this period that the cow is producing milk while at the same time is pregnant. This takes about 223 to 245 days. Meanwhile, it is recommended that milking of the gestating or pregnant cow be stopped 45 to 60 days before the expected date of calving. The period from the time when the cow is no longer being milked until the time of calving is called the dry period. Milk production over time of dairy animals can be represented in a lactation curve. Lactation curve is the graphical representation of daily milk production throughout the lactation period starting from the onset of lactation after calving until the cow's milk dries up, typically at about 305 days. The vertical axis of the graph represents the amount of milk produced daily in kilograms, while its horizontal axis represents the time within the lactation period in days. The lactation curve of a dairy cow typically reflects a peak of milk output around 4 to 6 weeks of lactation, then gradually declines thereafter. The rate of decline in daily milk yield from one point to another within the curve is the persistency of lactation. The peak of lactation and persistency define the shape of the lactation curve, hence are the factors that determine the total milk yield throughout the lactation period. Persistency of lactation is typically defined as the ability to maintain milk production after reaching its peak. High persistency is associated with a slow rate of decline in production, whereas low persistency is associated with a rapid rate of decline. Persistency is a measure of the rate of change of milk production between tests. As described by the Western Canadian Dairy Herd Improvement Services, persistency of lactation can also be described as milk yield at one test expressed as a percentage of milk yield at an earlier test adjusted to a 30-day interval between tests. Now, let's use this hypothetical test day milk production record as an example. In this table, test day refers to a specific day during lactation when milk yield was recorded. Testing day is done at a regular interval of either once a week, every two weeks, or once a month depending on the capability of the racer to do the recording. Meanwhile, days in milk refers to the corresponding period that the cow has been lactating on the day when the test day milk yield was taken. In this example, test day milk yield was recorded once a month or every 30 days. Then, milk yield refers to the amount of milk produced by the animal in kilograms on a given test day. And so, Milk yield which is recorded at test day 1 on the 30th day of lactation is 29.2 kg. At test day 2 on the 60th day of lactation with 37.6 kg and so on. If we plot these values into a graph, we could generate a typical lactation curve. In this video, we will describe the calculation of lactation persistency based on the method described 
by the Western Canadian Daily Herd Improvement Services. Suppose that we want to determine the persistency from test day 4 to test day 5. Since the two tests are exactly 30 days apart, persistency can be simply calculated using the formula Persistency is equal to milk yield in kilograms at later test divided by milk yield in kilograms at earlier test multiplied by 100%. Therefore, persistency of lactation from test day 4 to test day 5 is equal to 32.5 kilograms divided by 34.3 kilograms times 100%, which is equal to 94.75%. Same method of calculation is applied if we want to determine other persistencies with days between tests of 30 days. However, when tests are not exactly 30 days apart, between test day 4 and test day 11 as shown here for instance, the calculation would be different, such that persistency is calculated as 30 days divided by the number of days between tests multiplied by the difference between the milk yield at earlier test and the milk yield at later test divided by the milk yield at earlier test subtracted to 1 and finally multiplied by 100%. Using this formula, it is possible to calculate persistencies between any two points in the lactation curve. And so the average persistency from test day 4 to test day 11 which are 210 days apart, is therefore calculated as quantity 34.3 kg milk killed at earlier test minus 19.2 kg milk killed at later test multiplied by the quotient of 30 days divided by 210 days between tests then divided by 34.3 kg milk killed at earlier test then subtracted to 1 then finally multiplied by 100%. And the calculated average persistency is equal to 93.71%. If we try to compare lactation curves between two lactating cows, let's say cow A and cow B in this graph as an example, we can say that cow A has a slower rate of decline and is more persistent in milk production than cow B, though both cows have the same peak. This means that compared to cow B, cow A has a better milk production performance. The production difference between the two cows is represented by the shaded area between the two lactation curves. Next parameter is the calculated total amount of milk yield produced by the cow in kilograms or the lactation milk yield. The actual yield throughout the lactation period can be determined by simply getting the sum of the daily milk yield recorded. Meanwhile, in the absence of a daily milk yield record, Lactation milk yield can still be estimated using test interval method as described by the International Committee for Animal Recording. Milk yield is calculated through test interval method using this formula. Where MY is the milk yield in kilograms, M1, M2, MN are the weights in kilograms given to one decimal place of the milk yielded in the 24 hours of the recording day, I1, I2, IN-1 are the intervals in days between recording dates. I0 is the interval in days between the lactation period start date and the first recording date. And IN is the interval in days between the last recording date and the end of the lactation period. Let's use this hypothetical data as an example. Suppose that the date of calving is March 9 and the end of lactation is February 9 of the following year. First test day was done on April 8 when the animal is on the 30th day of lactation and the milk yield recorded on that day was 29.2 kilograms. Then the second test day was done on May 8 when the animal is on the 60th day of lactation and the milk yield recorded on that day was 37.6 kilograms and the rest of the test days were done as indicated in the table with a total of 11 test days or recording dates. Substituting the values in the formula, the interval between the lactation period start date, which is March 9, and the first recording date, which is April 8, which is equal to 30 days and includes the days March 10 until April 8. 
the interval between first and second recording dates, which is April 8 and May 8 respectively, which is equivalent to 30 days, including the days April 9 until May 8. The interval between the second and third recording dates, which is May 8 and June 7 respectively, which is equivalent to 30 days, including the days May 9 until June 7. Same is true with the succeeding recording dates. Then, the interval between the preceding and last recording dates, which is January 3 and February 2, respectively, which is equivalent to 30 days, including the days January 4 until February 2. And, the interval between the last recording date and the last day of lactation, which is February 2 and February 9, respectively, which is equivalent to 7 days, including the days February 3 until February 9. And the sum of the intervals is equal to 337 days, which represents the length of the lactation period. Then, the milk yield recorded on the first recording date as assumed daily milk yield within the period between the calving date and the first recording date. Then, the estimated daily milk yield between the first and second recording dates calculated as the average of the milk yield recorded on these two recording dates. Then the estimated daily milk yield between the second and third recording dates calculated as the average of the milk yield recorded on these two recording dates. Then, the estimated daily milk yield for the succeeding period are calculated in the same manner. Then the milk yield recorded on the last recording date as the assumed daily milk yield within the period between the last recording date and the lactation end date. And these are the daily milk yield for each of the specified periods. Then, total milk yield within each specified period is calculated as the product of the interval in days and the corresponding daily milk yield for the period in kilograms. Then getting the sum of all the calculated yields gives the estimated total quantity of milk yield of 9,773.4 kg throughout the 337-day lactation period. In this example, the interval between recording dates are exactly 30 days. However, the use of test interval method offers flexibility such that accumulated milk yield can still be estimated even if the interval between recording dates is not exactly 30 days, as shown in this table. In this example, first recording date was 14 days after the calving date, the succeeding recording dates as shown in here, and the last recording date was on the 270th day of lactation, which is also 14 days before the lactation end date, giving a lactation period of 284 days. calculation of daily milk yield for each period is done in the same way with the previous example. And so with the total milk yield for each period. Giving an estimated lactation milk yield of 4,973.2 kg throughout the 284-day lactation period. This ends our discussion on milk production performance of dairy animals.